the pilgrimage into the heart of Anawa continues. And here we are at El Tajin. And as you can see behind us, it's a beautiful site. Uh, this is another of the sacred sites uh, of Anahuac. This is for us, uh, the Nicantlaca, the indigenous people of this continent, the Mexicans, Central Americans, Native Americans, the First Nation people. This is our heritage. This is something that we should all be proud of. And we'd like you to just think about what it took to build what is behind us. Yeah, it's in ruins today, but imagine it at its height. The buildings that behind us that were blue and white and red and black. These were uh, buildings that took a lot of work. We're going to show you a lot of other video of this place. But for those of you who are, you know, middle school, high schoolers, you know, this should be something for you to look forward to one day to come to a place like what's called El Tajin and the other sacred sites uh, of our ancestors. Sites that are in, in the hills like this, or in some cases in the plains, uh, uh, like at Teotihuacan. Uh, there's something very special about all these locations because our ancestors were working very, very hard to, cr to communicate with our Creator, to let our Creator know that, that we love the Creator, that we enjoyed the fact that we were given life and even the fact that we knew that one day we were going to die and that we were going to try to make the most out of our life to give it meaning to give it significance but right now our people are in a form of slavery where we have no significance money is money is not significance money is not relevant we, we have to have the the same mentality as our ancestors about having pride in our heritage, being clear about our identity, and living our life so we can make it better for all of us, not just what's good for you. The, um, the specifics of here at El Tajin, uh, as you can see, it's real famous for what's called the niches, the building with 365 niches that represent the year. There are other buildings here that I, I've just seen for the first time in my life. I've never seen photos of uh, this location has um, uh, beautiful surrounding hills. This is a very uh, tropical area. We've seen some mame uh, uh, trees and banana trees, and it's a beautiful little river going through here. Uh, but this was an area that basically had been abandoned uh, by our people at one point uh, because we're right on the, the Gulf, what's called the Gulf of uh, Mexico. And, of course, here is where uh, hurricanes come. And this is evidently an area that got hit by a hurricane really bad at one point. And our people ended up abandoning the area. Because, remember, it takes quite a while to be able to recover. Especially if you've lost uh, lives, if you've lost uh, your, whatever your foods you were planting, uh, whatever storage you had of foods. They're talking about how this place actually, even in its, the ruins that it's in, that it got hit by a hurricane recently, and trees were, were felled all over the place. And, and, they said, and that wasn't really even a, a, a big hurricane. It was just a, you know, a, a moderate hurricane. And then the real huge hurricanes hit every 50, 100 years or 200 years in some areas. And when you're devastated like that, that's how you end up uh, abandoning cities like this. But keep in mind, this is more of a natural phenomenon that happened, how this city was basically was abandoned. But beyond that are, are cities that were actually destroyed by the Europeans. And there were the, the whole sections of, of cities that were covered up uh, by the Spaniards to put their buildings and they used their materials, like in Tenochtitlan, what's called Mexico City. And then um, uh, there are the sacred sites like this that at one point were abandoned uh, mostly because of weather issues, whether it was a hurricane like here or in other areas where there was a drought, in other areas where uh, to this day we don't know really what, what it was, but something climactic changed uh, or there had to be a migration, something along those lines. 
So when it comes down to uh, what's called tahin, uh, yeah, your eyes tell you a lot. We're planting seeds through the internet. Since that's kind of the, the new communication tool for the world, that's where this is being uh, disseminated. So this is uh, the classroom. This is the, the inspiration for you. This is uh, the guidance for you. This is uh, something that we hope will get you to see things that you were not able to if see it, before. If it means you just concentrate on your family, that's a good, good start. But from there, Try to work on some people in the neighborhood. Share the materials with them. Share the, 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 the ideas you know, that you've picked up. Maybe they don't want to read the, the website. Maybe they don't want to read the books. Show them some videos. Okay. Invite them over to your house uh, uh, for a party. You know, a, 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 a party of knowledge to discuss identity, why we're not Hispanic or Latino, to discuss the basic you know, heritage of our people, going back to the Olmecs and talking about the Mayas and talking about the Mexica and talking about the Otihuacan and then talking about the genocide that killed 95% of our people and how we're 5% that Do have something. survived. St take some actions, intelligent actions, like being part of the work that we're doing here with Mexica movement. Meaning, okay, at least go to the website, read the material there. If you have a little bit more courage, Come and join the, the, the work that we're doing. It's a lot of work. And if, you, if you're nowhere able to uh, be able to do the work with us, pass out the information to your friends, your family. Share that knowledge. Tell them you're not Hispanic, you're not Latino. And knock off this raza mestizo uh, nonsense also. And well, what do we call ourselves? We can say Nicantlaca. I'm Nicantlaca. Meaning I'm indigenous to this land. We need more oh, people no. to get involved in what we're doing and what Mexica movement is presenting, the vision that Mexica movement is presenting. We need your help in helping us reclaim our indigenous identity.